We are building a DIY LifePo 4 battery. Um, ours is an 8S, which is eight cells. Each one is 280 amp hours. Uh, the battery pack has been fully top charged and I built the battery, the BMS leaves. We've got them all charged. Now we need to cut the foam. Welcome to Bussing on a Budget. Gently score. Where we want it. Oh yeah. Oh, that's great. Here is the finished product. Amazing. Wow. All right, so now we can actually start building the battery. First up, let's get the foam padding installed. First, we need to assemble these in the correct series. All right, so we are doing an 8S 24 volt pack wiring. And the way that works is plus minus plus minus. So we are making battery inserts. So if you look down here, we'll have pieces of foam. all of the battery packs. Got one so far and a few more to go. All right, this is what we're gonna call it for tonight. We've got the battery pack laid out. All of the foam pieces have been cut. We'll need to build compression boards, get the rods going for that, but that's a later project. Uh, we also need to connect the BMS leads, get the BMS connected, and we'll get there. For a little update, we've got the battery pack half disassembled. What I'm doing here is finishing our baseboard, our battery clamp board, and this will go on the front and the back of our battery pack, and that's gonna be clamped down with these rods, and we will have compression on our battery pack. All right, we've got the compression board in, got all the holes drilled on it. Battery set up, gonna put the other side on, put the bars through it, and then we will have a compressed battery pack. All right, we've got the broad end on this one, rod in on that side. Now what we need to do, so we've got the boards on. We've got two more bars. I'm thinking we put these right in the middle. Yes. We can just hammer the foam home. Yeah. All right, so now we can pull the other rod out. Push the other rod through. Now we're going to snug up the nuts, get everything compressed, and... All right, so we have the battery connected. We are currently running out battery power. Just did a test with the diesel heater. All right, so I went and got the space heater. So the space heater turns on. We're pulling two amps now. So it's working. Uh, the heater is holding 33 amps. 66 amps. Wow. All right, did, did you guys see that? Record that. We've got the temporary iteration. So currently we're pulling 68 amps at 25 volts, which is right around 1700 watts. 
Got this space heater running and it is hot. So here's our final setup. So I've got washers on all the lugs so they make great contact now. BMS is hanging out down here. I changed the wire to the negative, so it's actually this, the one with the, the red and the, the black. So those are both eight gauge wires and they go to the negative on the uh, BMS. And so the reason for that, uh, I wanna have something that's a little bit longer, a little bit more flexible so that if we pull this pack out, that those cables can come with it. We've also installed our circuit breaker down here. So we've got the 100 amp circuit breaker connected down there. All right, so we have the battery connected. We are currently running off battery power. Just did a test with diesel heater. It did power all the lights. There's absolutely no flickering. Thank you very much for watching our video so far. At this point, if you've been following along, you'll have ordered your battery cells, you'll have ordered a battery BMS, you'll have gotten some battery sense leads, you either ordered those pre-wired or did those yourself, and you may have also ordered a Y adapter splitter depending on your BMS. Ours required one, so it's helpful to order that pre-done so you don't have to wire something together yourself. And then once you have all the components, you'll wanna decide if you're going to do compression or not. If you see yourself using the battery for more than 10 years, it's probably a good idea to use compression. If you're only gonna be using it for five to 10 years before you either sell it or get rid of it, then it's probably not worth the extra effort to do compression. If you do opt for compression, you can go the route that I did, which is using a neoprene foam that exerts 12 PSI when compressed a one half inch distance. It's very important to get around 10 to 12 PSI because too much pressure at around 15 to 20 can actually degrade the battery life and too little won't really increase it very much. The sweet spot that the testing showed was at 11 PSI using a hydraulic force clamp setup. Unfortunately, we don't have access to hydraulic force clamps and neither do most people. So one of the acceptable solutions is foam and a backer board to compress the foam. I've also heard of people using ratchet straps as a more budget option. And I've also heard of things like springs and other ways of just purely bolting a threaded rod onto a board with a set amount of torque on a wrench. The issue is it's hard to really transfer torque on a wrench to torque or to PSI on a on the face of the battery cell. All right, so once you've got all of your components, including the compression supplies, if you go that route, the next step is going to be assembling your battery pack itself. So you want to arrange that in the correct configuration. If you're doing an 8S or a 4S pack, if you're doing a 12 volt or a 24 pack, and then the actual physical arrangement really does matter too. Do you want them to be in a straight line? Do you want them to be in a cube? Do you want them to be in a smaller cube, a bigger cube? There's different options. If you're using no compression, you would attach the bus bars directly to the batteries with the BMS sense leads on top. If you're using compression, I'd recommend something like a braided battery grounding cable that has a little bit of flex to it. Once you have your bus bars and your BMS sense leads on, you then wanna tighten those down. And at that point, you will have your battery pack built with the BMS sense leads connected. You then need to connect your BMS to the sense leads. You need to power your BMS up. You also need to attach the main power lugs and wires to the battery pack and the lugs to your BMS. Once you've done that, you've essentially built your battery pack. If you opted for a pre-programmed or an unprogrammable BMS, once it's connected, you don't have to do any more work. If you didn't get a pre-programmed one, I would recommend finding a specific guide on your BMS as it is very, very unique to the BMS and your battery pack as each cell has different chemistry and different cell packs and arrangements have different voltages and requirements. So if you're not building a 24 volt 8S 580 amp hour pack, then this video and these instructions will probably not apply to your build. I thank you for, for following along. 
I hope this guide was useful to you. And if there's any questions you have, feel free to leave them below. And once again, thank you for watching us and please subscribe.